Today we are going to discuss a very important phenomena which is emerging in contemporary political discussion as well as in political theory and that is uh, whether liberal theory is in crisis. When we talk of liberal theory we know that we are talking about liberalism in general and in practice when we talk of liberalism we believe that it is primarily a philosophy of America and Western Europe. And when USA is in crisis, we start saying that liberal theory is in crisis. But that is not the, the case. Uh, we are primarily concerned with the theoretical aspect of uh, what is uh, liberalism and uh, how we perceive this uh, uh, crisis of liberal political theory. In many countries, we see that uh, the new emerging democracies and uh, uh, existing liberal uh, states they are changing their course in the, in the time and there is a confusion sometimes whether what they are pursuing is a classical liberal uh, thing or not. So let me begin with uh, briefly about uh, uh, how liberalism has come into existence in today's time. Uh, we all agree that uh, liberalism started with uh, classical liberalism uh, with John Locke who formulated this principles of uh, liberalism and he says that uh, liberalism is basically a theory of the state which was suitable for the emerging bourgeois class and the emerging bourgeois class was of uh, the uh, capitalist or we can say that merchants and they wanted uh, freedom in their academic activities from the, uh, from the state. And so they started uh, believing in this or propagating this theory of state uh, which is called uh, liberal theory where the rights of individuals were the basis. They are unquestionable and they are what, they call, what John Locke calls the uh, natural rights. So if they are natural, the state is not natural, the state is artificial, the state is created out of social contract, the state is created out of the will of the people. So a state is a means and the end is individual's rights. It was believed that individual can achieve anything with their rights. The only thing, the only hindrance in their achievement is that the outside forces are creating some trouble. And so outside forces should be controlled by a state. And the only function of the state is to provide such congenial atmosphere in which the individuals can enjoy their rights and by enjoying their rights, they can achieve whatever they want. So this is the classical notion of uh, liberalism, where rights are unquestionable. And Rawls, uh, sorry, John Locke has talked about uh, three rights, as we know, right to life, right to property, and right to freedom. Then comes 19th century, when we talk of utilitarianism. In utilitarianism, the formation was changed of liberal theory, where state become important and not rights. Even rights were considered the powers which are recognized by the state. Without the recognition of the state, there are no rights. So rights are part of a state's recognition system. In John Locke, state was not required for recognition. But in utilitarianism, state is the institution which recognizes everything. But which state is liberal state? That state is liberal state, which pursue a policy which helps the maximum people in maximum number, maximum people and with maximum happiness. So a state who is pursuing a policy which gives maximum happiness to maximum people, that is a liberal state. That was a 19th century liberalism. And by this uh, political theory comes out the concept of welfare state, which was in existence for so many years. Even today, many states claim to be welfare state uh, because they feel, they feel that it is the duty of the state to help individuals and the welfare of the individuals is in the hand of the state. The third phase, which we call of liberalism, uh, comes out uh, when we talk of John Rawls. John Rawls in 1971 came out with a book, uh, Theory of Justice, and he provided a new basis for liberal theory, and that is justice. It is not right, or it is not happiness, but it is justice, which is the basis of a liberal state. Although, when he defines his justice, he takes uh, liberty as a as part of justice that is a different thing or rights of liberty as a part of justice but justice is a is a, is a more comprehensive uh, term 
which include not only rights but also socio-economic justice. So uh, today when we talk of justice, it is primarily we are talking in terms of uh, Rawlsian theory of uh, justice and Rawlsian theory of liberalism. But when we say that liberalism is in crisis, then there are many things which are involved in it and we have to be very clear, clear and careful about when we use the concept of crisis. So let us begin. What is that is in crisis? The question is, the crisis is in, the liberal ideas are in crisis. Now what is that liberal idea? We, we, I just talked about the liberal idea of right, of freedom. And right to equality is not a liberal idea. Right to equality is not a natural right in Lockean system. In Rawlsian system, right to equality is there because socio-economic uh, equality is to be established. But that is subservient to the right to liberty because priority principle according to Rawls is that the first or the order, lexical order where the first thing that is first principle is to be satisfied then we can talk about the second principle. So in liberal sense we can say that freedom or liberty is given importance. But nowadays is the, with the rise of democracy for instance the question of equality has become as important as the question of freedom. Because democracy as an idea is based on equality and not on rights. Now, equality means that, as we know that uh, when we talk of the uh, adult franchise, which is now accepted almost more than 120 countries. So, um, adult franchise is based on the right to equality, which means what is the right to equality? The equality of every individual to, to elect its own ruler because democracy is primarily a, a philosophy which defines that ruled choose their rulers and the ruled those who are governed they are of different uh, types you know they are of the, in, a, in different hierarchies in different societies there are several layers of hierarchy but democracy believes that every individual who may be placed at the lowest place in the society has got the equal reason and equal right to decide who will govern over him. In comparison to, we can compare him with the king, we can compare him the most celebrated person of the society, he will also get one vote, he or she will get one vote, and the most suppressed person in the society, he or she will also get the one vote. So equality of vote is the basis of democracy. So now that is a debate between liberty rights of liberty and right to equality. And in that debate, we see that the liberal ideas are questioned. So the more people are towards democracy, the more there is a possibility that they will start questioning liberal ideas. We can put it into a different uh, uh, frame also, this particular uh, question, that in liberalism, there are two main elements of liberalism by which liberal state or liberalism is defined. One is the rule of law. It is not the rule of one person or many persons or even all persons it is rule of law which means law is above everybody uh, everybody means one person who may be very powerful or a group of person which may be very very powerful or even all of the persons almost for instance if in a particular situation in a particular place all persons of that particular situation they defy rule but the rule even if they believe they, uh, because they defy rule because they believe that it is wrong but the law of the rule of law will be empl uh, employed there it is the duty of the state to employ rule of law now rule of law can be amended and when it is amended on the, on the on the popular demand laws are amended from time to time but till it is amended the rule the law should be implemented without any consideration of anybody of any group so this is the rule of law is the basis of liberal state. Now in democracy, we believe that it is the people's will which is more important because we have, people have elected their representatives. So the problem with the representatives in all most of the democracy is that when they are, represent, they, when they are elected to their uh, parliaments or to the legislatures and uh, state legislatures and senate or house of representatives, 
then the problem arises whether they should go by the rule of law or they should represent their people's will because at many times this is there is a conflict and in that conflict comes out this crisis of liberalism that because of liberalism democracy has come to stay and with the growing democracy now liberalism is in crisis so that is the first important uh, point i just wanted to make that we talk when we talk of crisis in liberalism it simply means the crisis in upholding liberty against the the right of equality or upholding rule of law against people's will that is first thing the second important thing about liberalism is that it has failed to tackle certain contemporary problems that is the generally perceived notion i am not saying that they it is right or wrong but that is the general perceived notion about liberalism that is why people started calling that liberalism is in crisis because liberalism has failed to tackle contemporary problems if we see the evolution of liberalism then we will see that liberalism emerged because liberalism was able to actually perceive the contemporary problems at its at its time and could provide as better solution so in 19th century in, in in 18th century when the emerging bourgeois emerging capitalists were there then liberalism provided them security the right to freedom the non interference by the state or feudal lords so they could relate themselves to the contemporary problem in 19th century after the industrialization took place and factories were established then the then the question of welfare of the workers came into existence and socialism uh, emerged because of the because for the for the plea for the welfare of the uh, uh, workers and to counter that liberalism took shelter in the concept of welfare state on the basis of utilitarianism so in 19th century the problems were large and large industrialization and the problems arising out of that that industrialization one problem was how to take care of the workers conditions because workers were required large number of workers were required in a particular factory and when the large number of workers are assembled at a particular place then they have their own problems to how to solve those problems problems of so their problem their, their families problem of staying problem of working hours problem of their insurance and so many things and welfare state was the solution for that so at that time they, they tackle it now in 20th century when john rawls provided his theory then at that time <coughs> what was required was that how to tackle communism because communism in the uh, under the guidance of soviet union and um, uh, china they were posing a threat to liberal idea that uh, half of the civilized world the half of europe and many other countries they were following socialist they were trying to following socialist ideas because they believe that socialist ideas are appropriate to tackle this problem of equality because equality was emerging as a as a major concept after second world war now john rawls's theory started seeing this this is the problem which we are facing and that is why he gave his theory of justice as fairness in which liberty and equality both joined hands together to formulate a theory of justice which should be the base of a liberal state but after the demise of soviet union now there are new problems which are coming up and liberalism in the initial stage thought that it has overpower everything because they thought that communism is the main threat to them and when the communism has gone away then there is no threat to that and that is why uh, for instance uh, fukuyama in his classic uh, end of history book in 1993 and before that he wrote an article on that he declared that this is the end of history and the last man the last man is a liberal man because now liberalism has triumphed over all other ideas so there is no crisis in 1990s early 1990s after the demise of soviet union and collapse of communist uh, regime uh, in the world but gradually they started realizing that it has created a new type of crisis for liberalism which they could not think of at that time at a, at the theoretical level there are many new strands which came out in collaboration with uh, liberalism like in collaboration with john rawls and in contrast with john rawls so one thing that happened was that 
liberalism which was a very uh, uh, composite philosophy which was a very clear cut philosophy when it was fighting with fascism or as it was fighting with communism when fascism gone away and communism gone away then the remind, remainder remainder of the uh, liberalism it got scattered and there are many variants came out of the liberalism which we can see by saying that there is a variant which is the major uh, uh, liberal uh, variant liberal egalitarianism we have libertarianism we have neoliberalism and we have communitarianism now there are many others but these are the four major variant of liberalism and they are totally trying to outmaneuver each other so liberalism could not remain a, a composite a solid a monolithic philosophy but de degenerated or you can we can say uh, expanded into a very loosely knitted philosophy which has many variations so that is the first crisis then the problem is that every libertarian every strand of liberalism call claims that that is the real liberalism so even neo liberal today says that they are we are the we represent classical liberalism libertarian says that no no the liberal egalitarianism is not liberal they are primarily socialist or communitarian says that no no their concept of individual itself is wrong so there is a conflict of uh, interest as well as conflict of ideas within the liberal group and then we say that there is a crisis in uh, liberalism then the last thing which is very important is that with on the basis of these ideas a state has also changed its character the liberal state has changed its character now the liberal state on the one hand the classical liberals talked of minimal state and in the 19th century we uh, shift for, we shifted from minimal state to welfare state so now both these states are in existence and when both these states are existence then the problem is that which one is right whether we should believe in minimal state or we should believe in welfare state when we believe in minimal state then we say that we are neo liberal because now it is neo liberals are uh, hankering after uh, uh, minimal state when we say welfare state then people say that no we are we are socialist in one form or the other form so the new thing is this is a new crisis of terminology whether liberalism exist as a composite philosophy or not now the crisis which is emerging in liberalism is the nature of crisis is also very important one thing which is important is that if we look at the actual liberal uh, thinkers then we will find that even just after second world war the most uh, you know the, uh, the most important enemy of liberalism was considered communism and in america we know mccarthyism that when john mccarthy has said that no no we no single communist should exist in our united states and there were rules regulations and laws and cia was working and fbi was working that no person should be uh, no, even in intellectual circles or any other circle that if anybody is supporting communist idea in very liquidated form also then he should be shunted out so communism was considered uh, as a prominent enemy of liberal liberalism and during cold war we know in 1962 even the cold war was to be converted into hot war so cold war at the peak of cold war these two ideologies were totally in contrast to each other <coughs> what happened is that in after the demise of communism after the after the decline of communism in 19 uh, from 1989 to 1999 1991 uh, the soviet union empire was demolished and then what happens that the new things new ideological confusion the new things which were emerging a new combination has emerged and the new combination is that now liberals have joined hands with the left because those who came out from the soviet empire's uh, dominance the new countries which came out most of them were considered leftist countries in one sense or another but they favored liberalism they favored america they favored the western europe so they joined hands and against them the new ideological uh, enemy which emerged was of the right a new right or right and they joined hands with the with the conservatism so a new formulation has come up nowadays 
which is very un which was unheard of in 1950s now on the one side of the spectrum is left liberal and on the other side of the spectrum we have right conservatives we can see that in 1990s uh, 1980s for instance this thing has started coming up uh, with the ronald reagan and margaret thatcher in 1990s it crystallized and later on now when we talk we say that these two are totally opposed to each other and it's a new combination so you might be hearing this uh, notion that in india for instance when we talk we talk of left liberals are doing this so left and liberals are considered one group and rightist and conservatives they have joined hands now this is a new thing then the crisis of liberalism is that which is liberalism because rights also claim that they are liberal and left also claim that they are liberal so liberalism has become a very heterogeneous philosophy some sort of heterogeneous philosophy then the new problem came out is that it is not simply democracy and liberal liberalism but it is also about the individual right and majority will because when john stuart mill has said uh, about uh, upholding individual right he was concerned about the majority's dominance and he believed that if with the rise of democracy and when we believe that 51% persons are with who with with a particular group or society with a particular group then they will be uh, they will form the government and they will not take care of the 49% who have not voted for them it will increase gradually and <coughs> so what will happen ultimately is that with the rise of majoritarianism the individual's voice will be will be controlled or will be uh, it, uh, will not be heard of and that will be a, uh, a a strike at the at the root of liberalism because liberalism is for the upholding of individual's right individual's will so th this is a new type of crisis which is coming up and in this crisis what we are seeing is that whether individual rights uh, should be uh, given more important than the majority's will or not in another word what we are what i'm trying to say is that uh, whether democracy should be given more importance than the liberalism because rise of democracy has also threatened liberalism although many believe that uh, this is not the right way of putting it but i think this there is no other way how to put it with the rise of democracy uh liberal uh, foundations are now shaken now fariz zakaria an american political scientist we know is considered rightist <clears throat> he wrote in, in 2004 5 a uh, book called uh, the the future of freedom in that he indicated this that the rise and enhancement of democracy is threatening the basics of liberalism and now he came out another book in 2015 or something uh in which he says that um that which he calls the post american phase world so with the decline of liberalism uh, the decline of um, usa is imminent and with the rise of democracy the rise of uh, countries which has larger population they they are on the rise like india and china why they are considered threat to the world uh, powers because they have got large population and the larger population which is participating in democratic process they will be having more and more power they will have self reliant they will have more confidence in themselves so in china and in, in uh, india in china there is no democracy but china has has taken another path that is of capitalism and communism they are combining capitalism and a communist state which is very new experiment so the economic prosperity is coming there in india we are gradually we are sh showing uh, the democratic spirit and more and more people are participating in democratic uh, uh, formation of the government and we are gradually rising in economic uh, benefits also so what happens is that where the population is large then the democracy ultimately democracy will thrive and when the democracy will thrive then they will certainly subsidize the uh, the uh, the liberal milieu of the uh, of uh, the, that particular country and in that sense uh, we say that this crisis is uh, is is taking many forms and people have started believing that democracy is more important or capitalism is more important than liberalism now there is a 
you know, dissociation of capitalism with liberalism also. In the 18th century, when liberalism came, then it was thought that liberalism is a is a uh, is a philosophy of dem of capitalism, and capitalism cannot survive without liberalism. But China has shown that capitalist that the state can control capitalism and capitalism can grow. And so there is no need for a liberal state. There is a need for an authoritarian state and through authoritarian state we can uh, help capitalism to grow. So the dissociation of liberalism with capitalism has also harmed liberalism. So liberalism is not important even for economic growth. It was important for personal uh, individual rights but it is not it is not considered important for economic growth also so de either democracy is important or capitalism is important and liberalism is not important then we have a new phenomena in the last 20 25 years that is called the rise of funda fundamentalism now in the rise of fundamentalism is that the challenge it is a challenge to liberalism in in in, uh, in, a, in two sense at least one sense that reason is not important liberalism is based on the assumption that human behavior is controlled by reason when human behave for public good at least then they take the course of reason and that is what Rawls has indicated in concept of public reason so reason is utilized for public good for distribution of public good or primary goods but now gradually we see that with the rise of fundamentalism faith is becoming important. People are not interested in discussing on the basis of reason. The mode of discussion is also changed. You can see this on, on TV debates and anywhere and at, at various places of debates where rational discussions are not taking place, where prejudiced biases, uh, biased people are there and they came out with their arguments and say, no, no, this is no reason. They say, we have faith in, in this particular person. We have faith in this particular ideology. We have faith in this particular form of, in, in the way of life, in this religion. So we don't want to, be, there is nothing to reason about it. You don't have to reason it. You don't have to reason out it. So, it is totally unheard of. Now, for instance, uh, there are many philosophers who believe that with the coming of modernity, gradually, faith will disappear and reason will be the sole element of decision making in human beings. But we see that faith has resurfaced after medieval period, medieval period, now we are seeing that faith, faith is resurfaced and reason is not given due importance. And when there is a decline of reason in public sphere, then there is a decline of liberalism because liberalism is based on reason and not on based on uh, what we call uh, faith. Then there is a very uh, another important aspect is that even in democratic countries and in democratic processes, we see that a new type of leadership is emerging, and that new type of leadership which is emerging is an authoritarian in nature. We can see Soviet Union, for instance, where Putin is there. We know what the Putin is there for the last 20 years, and he will remain there for now next 15 years more. Why? He has he is very popular and person there. He is a celebrity. But he uses his celebrity to manipulate even the electoral process. And he became president for two times when the, in the constitution is written that you can't uh, fight election for presidentship after two terms. Then he changed, he became president, he became prime minister and then he got the constitution changed and he again became president. So he is getting elected by people but he is manipulated election system in such a manner that he is elected only not no other person can be elected now this type of and people are like people for, vote for him so this type of new thing which is emerging uh, a new leadership which is emerging in democratic countries is also a threat to liberalism and and, and unfortunately people are accepting it because they believe that this is because liberalism is weak liberal leaders are weak and they cannot uh, take care of many new problems which are coming out coming out like fundamentalism like problem of immigration for instance in the western in the western uh, society the problem of immigration is very important and in the immigration problem cannot be solved by a weak liberal leaders because liberal leaders are considered very weak because they are very general they are very uh, you know large hearted you can say so the problem now with they, which they are facing is that with they have no clue how to deal with liberalism they have no clue how to uh, sorry how to deal with uh, 
minority group rights or uh, immigration, how to deal with terrorism, how to deal with fundamentalism. So when they don't have that, they don't have policies or uh, which which is evident uh, to deal with all these problems, and only the authoritarian leaders are seen to be dealing very firmly with these pro new emerging problems, then people have started questioning uh, what you call uh, liberalism. And so, uh, in the last, we can say that uh, uh, the, what is the future of liberalism? Now, future of liberalism, one future is that it, will, it is going to end and the world is going towards authoritarianism. It is a cyclic thing and after 60, 70 years of having liberalism at its peak, now it is, there is a decline of liberalism and people are uh, 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 accepting or preferring authoritarian states. That is one way of putting it, that may be one future. The second future is that liberalism is liquidated and liberalism is now coming into different forms. So we, cannot, we can say that liberalism is one, not one philosophy. We will have to talk about the liberalisms. They are very, they are very loosely connected with, the, connected with each other, these states, liberal states, with a loosely uh, structured rule of law and a loosely structured protection of rights. And, but the forms of these liberal states are totally different from one place to another place. So future is either it is an end of liberalism in the, and authoritarianism will, will prevail or liberalism will liquidate and will be reconverted will be converted into liberalisms or the last we can say that uh, liberalism may modify its own philosophy it will it will uh, have to react to the contemporary problems and regenerate itself with the new leadership or, or better leadership so that liberalism can survive thank you